Okay, so this problem is dealing with it's a word problem and it wants us to come up with a differential equation and it wants us to investigate the behavior as time goes on. So what we're told about this problem is we have a tank of water and in this this tank of water holds a, a maximum of one million gallons of water. And I'm going to call this amount the volume the volume of the tank. So water comes in at 300 gallons per hour and in each gallon of the water that comes in we have 0 0.01 grams of an undesirable chemical and we have Q naught some amount of chemical in here that's unknown it's just some amount that's al already in the tank to begin with. So we've got to create a differential equation to describe the situation. So the best way to do this is we're going to let Q of T be the amount of the chemical at time T. Okay, and we're going to use you know, Q prime and the derivative and etc. Uh, we're going to let this concentration of chemical per gallon, I'm going to just give this some arbitrary letter like alpha. And I'm going to give this 300 gallon per hour. I'm going to give that a capital R for rate. So now what we're going to do is we're going to consider a differential equation. This differential equation is going to be Q prime of T is equal to something. And we're going to say, well, Q prime is just the change in quantity of the chemical, right? So the change in quantity will be chemical N minus chemical out at a given time, T. So. Well, if we look at chemicals going into the equation, we have, well, there's R amount going in, and, well, that's R amount of water going in, so we multiply that by alpha to get the amount of chemical coming in. So that's the amount of chemical coming into the equation, or coming into the tank, sorry. The amount of chemical going out of the tank is Q, of T, the actual amount of chemical in the tank, divided by the volume, because it's a uniform distribution of chemical. So this is the amount of chemical per gallon going out. So then we can say this is R times alpha minus Q of T over V. And this is our differential equation. We can rewrite this to use numbers instead of our symbols that we've picked. So I'm going to say Q prime of T is equal to 300 gallons per hour times 0 0.01 grams per gallon then minus Q of T will be just Q of T, and that's in grams, and V is going to be 10 to the sixth gallons. Okay, well this is then our differential equation. Q prime of T is equal to that. What's interesting about this differential equation, the way it's structured, is that this means, notice that there's no Q naught at all in this tank, or sorry, in this um, equation. That means that the Q naught, the initial amount in the tank, is irrelevant as time goes on. Kind of counter counterintuitive, but it is true. So we would look at what happens as T goes to infinity. Well, if we take T going to infinity, for this equation, 
Well, let's just try to draw a direction field, or manipulate this equation first a little bit, and then draw a direction field. So we get q prime of t is equal to 3 grams per hour, multiplying that by that, minus uh, 3 over 10 to the 4th, hours on the bottom times q of t. So th if we draw a direction field for that, why am I switching to red? Okay, so if we have a direction field where this is q of t here and this is t axis, well q prime of t is equal to zero. Zero equals three grams per hour minus 3 over 10 to the 4th. This is just the standard way that we're going to do drawing a direction field. So we get, let me go back to black, okay. So this says that Q of T is equal to, uh, well, we have negative 3 grams per hour over negative 3 divided by 10 to the 4th hours. So this tells us that we have 10 to the 4th grams. So here's 10 to the 4th is our equilibrium solution. And then if we have a higher value of Q, that means our slope will become negative. Right? As, as Q gets bigger, this derivative becomes more negative. And then as Q gets more and more negative, our derivative will actually become positive. So that tells us that our solutions converge. So as T goes to infinity, Q of T approaches 10 to the fourth grams. So this tells us, without even actually having to solve the differential equation, we already know what the equation will tend towards, or the limiting behavior of the equation, as time increases. So that's how you solve problem 21 in Boyce and De Prima. Um, well, check back on my channel for more worked problems. Uh, thanks. See you around.